right, man. It's uh, another one here. Something fun. It is officially play-in, playoff, NBA playoff season. I have, I figured I'd show a couple of jerseys that I've had over the years that I recently may have purchased. A little three-part series I'm gonna do here with a couple jerseys. Um, but before we get into that, as always, like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Thank you guys for the constant support. Now, first of all, I am not wearing a ba basketball jersey. I am wearing a Mike Piazza. Let me see if I can show this to you. It's a Mike Piazza, little authentic 50th anniversary drink. The reason I'm wearing this, this is off of the eve. Last night, as I'm filming this, Clayton Kershaw got robbed. They pulled this man after seven innings. Could have had a perfect game. Look, man, they got it. You know, that's the, the whole thing with the sitting of players in the NBA and the arm protection in MLB. It's ridiculous. Because guys are getting hurt way more now than they ever have. But yet we sitting them. I don't know politics. The fans is missing out, and it's it's not making the sport any better because these guys don't even they limp through the playoffs. But that's a whole another conversation for another day. Anyway, let's get into so shout out to Clayton Kershaw on his uh, seven seven inning no hit uh, no hit game should have been nine, but cool. All right, off the bat, you probably seen where this from the channel already. I got my old school. Chris Weber Bullets jersey. Uh, this is a swingman from Mitchell and Ness. The dope part about this jersey in particular that I love is that it has the number two on it. Now, a lot of you guys may or may not know, Chris Weber was actually drafted to the Bullets wearing this number, but he was later, he wore number four. I forgot exactly the story why, but he wore number four and number two with the Bullets. I said, I say, where's the Bullets? with the bullets and this when I, when I see every time I go in my closet and I see this jersey like there's a euphoric feeling I get being from Washington DC and this besides the Gilbert Arenas years of my DC basketball fandom this is the best era for me the Calvert Chaney the Tracy Murray the Javon Howard Ross Strickland is by far the most underrated player and point guard in NBA history so many guys he has given tutelage to, these young players, and I wish Hot Rod would get a lot more respect than he does, but every time I see this jersey in my claws, I always get excited, and I don't wear it enough, but I will more. All right, next up, I have here my Golden State Warriors throwback of Tim Hardaway, AKA Killer Crossover. Tim Hardaway, part of that TMT, Man, let me tell you something. Him, Mitch Richmond, bro, that, bro, bro. This is that era of basketball. This guy invented the crossover as far as we're concerned. Like, he was the killer crossover, right? He had that. Those guys did it before we didn't know. You know, Pistol P had crossovers and nice passes. But Tim Hardaway absolutely revolutionized the crossover itself. He later played with the Miami Heat, where he got a lot more popularity. Um, also, Tim Hardaway actually did have a pair of shoes. I don't think they were called the Tim Hardaways, but he had the commercial, the Air Bacons, um, our pair of shoes Tim Hardaway actually sponsored. Had the whole commercial in 92 in the playground, not playground, more like an outdoor basketball court, you want to call it that. And no, sorry, those were the Air Raids. You know, I'm sorry, I, I said um, I said the Air Bacons. I'm sorry, the Air Raids were the Tim Hardaways, and they obviously had the strap, you know, like a crossover, you know. And they had the Malcolm X, because back then the whole X thing with cross colors was a brand, and actually came back out too. But nonetheless, this Tim Hardaway jersey brings back amazing feelings for me, watching these guys play. And I was an extreme young pup. When this jersey actually was being worn by Tim Hardaway because it's a 1990 to 91 jersey, which is the year Jordan won his first championship, and I was depending on the month. I was five or six years old. However, this is a jersey I do wish the Warriors would wear a lot more. I do like the Warriors, some of the new jerseys they do wear. I like the blue one with the red and the red, blue, and yellow. That joint is crazy. But just this, this is the one they actually practice in nowadays, but. That's an amazing jersey in itself. This whole era, the 90s, is ridiculous. All right, last but not least, crazy man himself, Dennis Rodman, a.k.a. The Worm. 
You can't tell me too much wrong with this one. This one is not a swing man. This is an authentic. And if you could feel it, you can definitely feel the the, the weight of it compared to the swing man jerseys. However, at this particular time in 1988 to 89, when Dennis Rodman was drafted to the Detroit Pistons, these numbers were actually ironed on. They were not sewn in. So some teams actually had iron on numbers, some had sewn in. And I like how Mitchell Ness kept that original with this particular jersey. And they kept the iron on letters on there. Dennis Rodman went on to play with the Bulls and he played with San Antonio Spurs. He played with, I feel like somebody else played like one year with. But those are the three noticeable teams we know him to play with. And this man averaged, what, 20 rebounds a game for God knows how long. I think his career average is like 15 rebounds a game. With like two and a half, three points or something crazy. So we all, a lot of us know the history of Dennis Rodman. You know, this is the guy that married himself. <laughs> um, it was reported that Madonna offered Dennis Rodman $25 million to get her pregnant, and he declined back in the 90s. But those is 90 speculations and tabloids. Truth to them, I, I believe it. I do. I ain't gonna lie, man. It was crazy back then, man. It wasn't like it is now. People didn't really have the... There was pressure, but they didn't really seem to care much about it. They probably saw it. Like, Jordan was, would, would go find the pressure. He, 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 This guy played in this era, like, oh my gosh, he would... He would be on ESPN right now. Like he would probably be on NBA NBA TNT before a game. Like this man was known to read the newspaper before he would, when he was at opposing team's city the day of the game to see what they said bad about him to get motivation. But I never was a fan of the like the cut off sleeve kind of cut on the jersey. Definitely like that whole T-shirt jersey thing they did. Where, like when Steph Curry and LeBron went back and forth in the finals. Thank God they got rid of that. That was trash. That t-shirt, dry fit, jersey thing. I don't know who thought of that. It was a horrible idea. But they tried something new. <laughs> I'm glad it didn't stick. At any rate, thank you guys for joining me again for this first segment of NBA Playoff Jersey. I don't have a name for it. I don't know. I just thought it'd be cool to show you guys a couple of these jerseys I had. Repertoire. Thanks as always. Like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. See you guys in part two. And tell these guys stop resting, man. Stop. Stop. We need you playing. We pay money. And I ain't going to rant about that. Anyway, till next time, guys. Peace.